Take a picture of me, James Vanderzee, by Andrea J. Loney, illustrated by Keith Mallett. Deep in the heart of Lenox, Massachusetts, in a white frame house nestled between his aunt's home and his grandparents' house, lived a boy named James Vanderzee. James was the oldest boy of three sons and two daughters. At the Vanderzees, the children learned about music and art, and kindness too. James played the violin and piano. He also liked to paint, but drawing people was hard. He could never get their expressions right. James wanted to share the beauty he saw in his heart. One day, a man came to the Vanderzee home with a huge contraption called a camera. It was, it was the only camera in Lennox. Click, boom. The man took the family's picture and left. Later, he returned with a photograph that perfectly captured everyone's smiles and their mother's sweet gaze. This is how you make great pictures, thought James. I want a camera. In a magazine, James found a contest where the first prize was a camera. To win, he had to sell the most sachets of ladies' perfume. After months of selling sachets, James won. He won! But the camera came in parts, and the parts didn't fit together. So James had to start over again. He weeded his neighbor's garden for a quarter a day until he saved five dollars. And then James was the second person in Lennox to own a camera. First, James took pictures of his family. Then his classmates. Soon, people from all over town were saying, Take a picture of me, James Vanderzee! At home, James turned his closet into a darkroom and learned how to develop film. It wasn't easy to create photographs, but James loved his family. He loved his town and the people in it, so he always worked hard to make them look their best. Far away from Lennox, the world was changing. Many black families were leaving the segregated South to start new lives in big northern towns like New York City. James was ready for an adventure. At the age of 19, he took his camera and moved to Harlem. Woo! Compared to Lennox, Harlem was big, fast, and exciting. James had to hold onto his hat to keep his head from spinning. After working as a pianist, a waiter, and an elevator operator, James finally got a job as an assistant photographer at a portrait studio in New Jersey. Many big city customers came to have their portraits taken. James couldn't wait to take their photographs, but his boss sent him straight to the darkroom. He said customers would not want their portraits taken by a black man. James did not like the way his boss took portraits. His boss shot the photographs too quickly. Sometimes the customers weren't even ready. In the dark room, James worked hard to make everyone look their best. One day, his boss left for vacation and put James in charge of the shop. James promised to take care of the business, but in his own way. Instead of rushing the customers, James talked to them. He found their natural smiles and the perfect backgrounds. James treated the customers like family. In the dark room, James made their pictures look even better. He brightened people's eyes, straightened their teeth, and fixed their hair. He saw what was special in everyone and captured each person's story on film. When James's boss returned, he found a line of customers saying, Take a picture of me, James Van Der Zee! So James went back to New York and opened his very own portrait studio in Harlem, where the neighborhood was jumping with brand new music, art, books, and glamour. This cultural celebration was called the Harlem Renaissance. Just about everyone, politicians like Marcus Garvey, athletes like Joe Lewis and the New York Black Yankees, and world-famous performers like Florence Mills, Bill Bojangles Robinson, and Mammy Smith wanted fancy portraits taken by James Vanderzee. James photographed the rich and the poor, but mostly the middle class and this distinguished him from many other photographers. At the time, photographs of black people were often sad and grim depictions of poor farm workers or struggling city dwellers. But when James stepped behind the camera, click boom, everything changed. James used beautiful backgrounds, fancy props, and elegant clothing to help the people of his neighborhood look their best. 
In the darkroom, he fixed photos and combined images to create perfect portraits. Even James's street photography captured the pride, beauty, and joy of Harlem. People all over the world proudly displayed James's photos in their homes, in their businesses, and close to their hearts. But the world was changing again. Cameras were now smaller and cheaper. People could take their own photographs. Soon, customers stopped coming to James Vanderzee's studio. James tried to keep working. He took passport photos, shooting tiny portraits that helped send folks on faraway adventures. Eventually, though, James had no choice but to put away his camera. Instead, he fixed up old photographs sent to him by people from all over the world. Several years later, a visitor arrived at James's studio. The Metropolitan Museum of Art needed photographs for an exhibit on the history of Harlem. They found thousands of photos showing thousands of Harlem residents, all taken by James Vanderzee. The exhibit was called Harlem on My Mind, and James's work was a huge hit. People said it was like walking through 40 years of the history of Harlem. The photograph showed the Harlem of families and churches, friends and clubs, neighbors and celebrities, the Harlem of love, pride, and community, the Harlem that James Vanderzee always saw in his heart. And people came to say, take a picture of me, James Vanderzee. So James stepped behind the camera once again. Click, click, 